Hi, my name is Alex Campbell from Edmonton, Alberta, and this is my coffee roaster. I became obsessed with home roasted coffee probably about five or six years ago when I tasted some coffee that I purchased at a farmer's market that had been roasted just a couple days before. And really that began my obsession for getting the freshest home roasted coffee. My early experiments in home coffee roasting were with a popcorn popper and over time I basically modified the popcorn popper so that it not only uh, was controllable for the heat but then also eventually I hooked it up so it can be computer controlled so that you could actually have control over the roast. Shortly thereafter I became obsessed with building a little bit bigger roaster so uh, henceforth I started building my mega roaster project. The principle of this machine is it has a blower motor that blows air through a manifold and through a plastic welding element. It's 3400 watts and it runs on 220 volts AC. After the hot air exits the welding element, it goes into a manifold that's right underneath the beams. And in the bottom of that manifold is a whole bunch of holes that basically allow the hot air to not only be circulated through the beams, but also to circulate the beams in sort of a cyclic motion. So after the hot air goes up through the, uh, the beams, it actually exits out here and goes into a chafe collector cyclone. And the chafe is actually a thin skin that comes off of the coffee beans. Chafe cyclone is actually based on a, sort of like a dust collector design that you might see in a wood shop. So the hot air actually comes out through here and it goes into this uh, chafe cyclone. And what happens is that as the air goes through the cyclone, it essentially accelerates and what comes down through this taper and then the chafe drops out because it has enough mass and it drops out of the airstream. Then there's a pipe that actually goes down in the center of here and then the air exits out the back uh, and just exhausts out into the atmosphere. It's actually very effective and collects pretty much 100% of the chaff that comes off the beans. When coffee beans are roasting, they go through several distinct phases. The first is essentially the drying phase where the beans actually lose a lot of water and a lot of weight out of them. They then go into a yellowing phase, which is essentially where the beans start to undergo chemical reactions that creates a lot of the flavor compounds we might have in coffee. Once you achieve what's called first crack, and first crack is pretty distinguishable because it essentially sounds like popcorn popping. Um, the beans actually puff up and they will uh, lose a lot, of, a lot of mass and a lot of water. Beans have to achieve the first crack to be considered drinkable, and that would be considered a really light roast. As we, as we drive the beans through first crack here, it actually, it actually takes a lot of heat application at this point. So this, is, this will be actually your highest point. And if you look really carefully, you can start to see some of the chafe coming off the beans. And this means that it's approaching first crack. So the temperature right now is 381. Well, what you also really notice here is that the beans really start to gain volume. So as opposed to the beginning of the roast, there is a lot more volume there. So now I have to lower this fan motor even more. And it's well into first crack. I can hear the snap, crackle, pop of it really, really carefully now. It's also where you have to be careful though, because if you lose your circulation, you will uh, get squirting at the As you then climb through the temperatures, getting up close to around 425 to 450 degrees Celsius, the beans will actually undergo a second crack, which is where you get micro cracking of the beans on the surface. And around second crack is when you actually start to get into the darker roast of coffee. So, so as I get up here in temperature, what I'm really listening for is the snap which is a very faint snap of second crack. As I approach second crack, which I'm actually getting into now, her faint little snap, and that's where I'm gonna kill it. So now as I shut it off after second crack, I will can't increase the fan speed anymore because I have two full of a load of beans. And what you'll start to see here is the temperature will actually start to drop off pretty good. Once the beans are done roasting, I let them uh, circulate in the chamber for a little while just to cool off. After they're done cooling, I can then use my dumping mechanism to dump them into a pan to be collected for, for use afterwards. Uh, and this mechanism is all fabricated out of stainless steel and some Heimlinks. And what it does is it actually pops up a little valve 
and that valve will allow the coffee beans to get pushed out by the static air pressure that's inside the roasting chamber. Control of the roast is all done through a computer interface. It has a thermocouple probe, which is actually visible inside the roasting chamber, that measures the temperature of the beans that are circulating in the chamber. Uh, that feeds a signal into an Arduino, uh, which is a little microcontroller that interfaces with my computer. It has a little chat with a program on my computer called Roast Logger, which then sends a signal out to the heater uh, to actually increase or decrease the temperature. Also controlled from the Arduino and through my software is the fan speed. As the beans decrease in density, uh, they actually will get pushed out the top of the chamber and they'll actually make it all the way through into my chafe collection cyclone if I'm not careful. The roaster is mostly constructed out of stainless steel. I had to design it in 2D because I wasn't very well versed in 3D CAD at the time. As well, I didn't have access to any type of CNC machine, so I essentially had to do good old fashioned sheet metal fabrication. I drew up the design in Adobe Illustrator and then sent it out to be water jet cut. All of the parts then had to be essentially formed and welded together to make a 3D design. Uh, some of the parts that you'll see that are water jet cut are the top and the bottom of the plenums. Uh, this is actually just a, a straight piece of metal that's bent around. Uh, the plate in the bottom of the roasting chamber as well as all of the flanges on the backs and tops of these, the top flange here, and then the cone shape for this. I wasn't able to find a cone shape uh, that was either a reasonable price or that was available online with fast shipping, uh, so I actually had it water jet cut as well. I used an online program to create a template for it, and then I formed it using a sheet metal roller and then welded it together. Uh, the cup here in the bottom is actually just from a local dollar store, and it's probably used to store spices or something, but works fantastic for collecting chafe in. I had several challenges when I was building this roaster. Uh, first of all was that I didn't really have a lot of design experience, so I had to learn essentially how to do uh, both sort of, I guess, 2D and then 3D design uh, to be able to build this roaster. I didn't have any TIG welding experience, so uh, I was able to purchase a TIG welder, and then teach myself how to TIG weld just using some internet YouTube videos uh, from some fantastic guys out there that show people how to TIG weld on their channels. A really big challenge that I had that I wasn't really anticipating from the beginning was getting the fan to run on computer control. Running an alternating current motor uh, via computer is actually quite difficult because you need to employ what's called phase angle control. So whereas you can normally just use like a dimmer switch or something, uh, if you want to control it manually, to control it from a computer, you have to send pulses to it, and that actually involves being able to sense the current from the wall and actually being able to switch a, a solid state relay, or in my case, a triac, really, really fast to be able to uh, control the fan speed on the motor. So that took a lot of trial and error and some learning and some, definitely some experimenting with different components to get that working. Uh, but I'm happy to say that that actually works fantastically now. If I was to do this project again, probably the biggest thing I'd do is actually make this chamber a larger diameter so I could fit more beans in it. It's a lot of effort to basically be able to roast one pound of beans, and I feel that the supporting infrastructure, so the big blower motor as well as the 3400 watt heating element, could probably support a larger load of coffee beans. Uh, the, the things that work really well on it though, uh, the chafe collection cyclone works awesome. I can say that it pretty much collects 100% of the chafe as it comes off of the coffee beans. And uh, overall, the computer control is actually working very well. Uh, I'm very surprised at uh, how, uh, once you get everything sort of set up and tuned, how easy it is to actually be able to dial everything in and roast really consistently. So that's the build of my coffee roaster. It was a really fun project. Um, you know, and it actually took quite a long time to actually get everything built out. It's a project I've sort of been building up to over, over a couple of years. What I really enjoyed about this project was, I guess, the, probably the variety of skills involved with it. Um, from computer design to the actual sheet metal fabrication and the welding of it. Um, you know, being able to basically package everything and sort of integrate everything into a nice uh, tight, uh, tight package was, was really fun. Um, as well as I really enjoyed the computer interface side of things. Um, I've really grown to love microcontrollers and what they can do. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot of work behind them. You need to do, you know, coding in the background. And then there's always interface circuits they have to build to be able to sort of have your microcontroller talk with something like a computer. So that's, that's always sort of an ongoing challenge.